Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem subtree of another tree. And this problem is actually from the blind 75 list that we haven't really visited in quite a while because we've solved most of the problems on this list. But you can see one of the problems, uh, one of the few problems that we missed was subtree of another tree. So let's solve that today. By the way, this is a spreadsheet we created a long time ago, basically just tracking all 75 of the problems in the blind 75 list. You can see I've taken some of my notes on each of these problems over here, and each of the problems, or at least most of the problems, have a video solution that I created. Um, and you can see about 16 people are actually uh, you know, looking at this sheet right now. I assume most of them are viewers of mine. And if you don't really care for spreadsheets, I actually did make a video playlist of each of the solutions. Uh, we have about 68 of them done. So pretty much every problem has been solved except for you know, just a few of them, most of the hard problems at least. Okay, now let's get back to the problem. The description of the problem is pretty simple. We're given two binary trees. One is called root, so this is that entire tree. And the second tree is called subroot and this is that second tree. And the only thing we want to know is this subroot, this tree, this entire tree, is it a subtree of this tree on the left? Is this one a subtree of this one? Now, first question, what is a subtree? So for, for this uh, root tree, what's a subtree? Basically, you can start at any node in the tree and then take all of the nodes in that a subtree, right? So for starting at four, this is a subtree of the tree. Uh, starting at one, the node itself is a subtree. This itself is a subtree. This itself is a subtree. Even starting at the root node, this entire tree is a subtree of itself. So now the first thought that you probably have is to check if this is a subtree of this tree, let's just brute force it, right? And how would that work? Well, basically we would check, visit every single node in the root tree and then check starting from here, does the tree match the subroot tree? So let's start at the root, right? The root of both of the trees, three and four. Are, are the root values the same? Well, they're not, right? So that kind of automatically means that this entire tree is not equal to this tree. So then we continue, right? We check, okay, this, starting from here, starting from the four, are these two trees the same? Well, we check the root value. You know, they're, they're both the same, they're both four. So at this point, we're basically just comparing these trees to check if they are equal. And we can do that recursively. There's actually another leak code problem called same tree that I would recommend solving before this problem if you struggle with this problem. This one is also an easy problem if you wanna check it out. But yeah, we can recursively compare uh, these two subtrees. Four and four are exactly the same. So now let's check the left child of both trees. One and one are both the same. Now let's check the right child. Two and two are both the same. So yeah, these subtrees, you know, this this tree is a subtree of this tree because we did find a subtree that matches uh, this tree. So I think this is one of the problems where the solution is actually really simple, right? For every single node in this tree, let's call it S, for every single node in this tree, we compared that subtree to this entire tree. Let's call this tree T. So the way the worst case is gonna work out, basically for every position in the S tree, we'd have to end up going through every single node in the T tree, right? So from here, you know, let's say this was a four, the worst case would be that we'd compare all three nodes with all three nodes here. But of course we didn't have to do that because the root nodes weren't the same. But what I'm getting at is basically the overall time complexity for this solution, the brute force is gonna be S times T. And yeah, this works. So basically the size of both trees multiplied together. So this will get us accepted on leak code. But just because understanding the solution is simple, it doesn't mean implementing it is simple. It's actually kind of tricky. And my suggestion to you would be, since this is a tree problem, most tree problems are easiest to understand when you think of them recursively. So let's try to do that. Initially, the problem is we wanna know is T, this subtree, is it a subtree of the entire tree here, right? Is it a subtree of this tree? To determine that, the first thing we did was checked the first uh, subtree, right, the root subtree that matches this tree, right, so just three nodes in this case, right, and we found that no, this subtree is not the same as this one. 
right? And by the way, to check that comparison, we could create a helper function to do that for us. We'll call it same tree, right? That'll be a helper function just to compare two trees to let us know if they're equal. But in this case, it didn't work. Right, so now we have to continue the problem. And like I said, let's think of this recursively. Initially, we wanted to know, is T a subtree of this entire tree? We found that it's definitely not if we start at the root. So now let's ask the subproblem, is T a subtree of the left subtree of the root node? And when I say, is it a subtree of the left subtree over here? I'm not asking, is it the same tree? I'm asking, is it a subtree? So we're gonna have two functions in this case. One is the helper function, same tree, and another is gonna be uh, another function. I don't know what it's gonna be called. I think it's just the, the, the generic function that they give us. I think it's called is subtree. So basically that's how it's gonna work. Is subtree is initially gonna be called with S and T. Is T a subtree? of S. Well, we'll check, is it the same tree first, right? Okay, it's not the same tree as S. So then we want to know, is it a subtree of the left subtree? So what are we going to do in that case? Well, we're going to call uh, uh, the same tree function. Is it the same tree as the left subtree? So that's the main idea, but I think it won't make 100% sense until we actually jump into the code. So let's do that in a moment. But as with most recursive problems, we definitely don't wanna forget about the important edge cases when we are comparing the trees. So first thing, let's start with the helper function. What would happen if both trees were null? In that case, are they the same tree if they're both null? And yeah, if both trees are null, yes, they are the same. What about if two trees like this one and this one had the same initial values, right? Like the first three values we can see are the same, but what if one of the trees had an extra node uh, here, right? Th then is this tree the same as this one? Of course not, right? So we'll have to keep track of that when we do our is same tree function. Now, what about the is subtree recursive function? If both of these trees are null, is our is subtree gonna return true? Is T a null subtree, a subtree of another null tree? Well, that's gonna depend on our same tree helper function and it's gonna return true, so yes. A null subtree is a subtree of another null subtree. But the more interesting edge case is, what if S was null, right? S is empty, but T is non-empty. In that case, is T a subtree of this one? Nope, it's not, right? Because this tree cannot be found anywhere in the S tree. But what if the opposite was true? What if T was an empty tree? Then is an empty tree a null tree? Is it a subtree of a non-empty tree? And in this case, the answer is yes. And the main intuition I use is basically, you know, if we had a null tree here, we could just go to one of the children of, you know, one of the leaf children of the other tree. And technically these have a null subtree because they do have a null child. So that's kind of the intuition I use, but that might be a good clarification question to ask in a real interview. But in Leak Code's case, I think they do want that to be a uh, true. So those are the main topics that I wanted to go over. So now let's actually jump into the code and see how we can implement the solution. Okay, so now let's get into the code. And like I said, we are gonna define one more function, a helper function, same tree, which is just gonna pass uh, in the same parameters, right, two trees, S and T, and then let us know if they are the same tree. So we'll, uh, let's actually start with this function because I think it'll help us finish the rest of it. So the first base case is if we are given empty trees, right? If S is empty and uh, T is empty, they're both null. In that case, what do we want to return? Well, if they're both empty, then they are the same tree technically. So we can go ahead and return true. Now, if they're not both empty, then we have to actually compare them. So we have to compare them, but technically one of them could still be empty. So let's make sure both of them are not empty first, right? So if S and T are both non-empty, and the values of both of these are the same, right? Because that's, of course, how we determine if two trees are the same, if the values are the same. So if S val is the same as T val, uh, then what are we going to do? Are we going to return something? Well, we know that these two nodes are the same, but we still have to compare the rest of the subtrees, right? So we have to compare the S, the left subtree of S and T, and we have to compare the right subtree of S and T. Uh, right, so this is a recursive definition. So uh, what we're going to do is call same tree passing in the subtrees, right? So s.left and 
t dot left. We want to know the left subtrees are the same, but we also want to know if the right subtrees are the same. So we'll do the same calculation with both of these. And what's the return value going to be? Basically, if both of these are uh, true, if both of these return true, meaning the left subtree and the right subtree were uh, the same, then we can return that value. So what I'm just going to do is take the and, the conditional and of both of these, and then return that itself. So we have two cases so far. If both of the trees are empty, we return true. If they're both non-empty, then we actually compare the trees. And the third case uh, is basically if one of the, you know, if both of these conditions don't execute and they both return something, so they, the if statements will never exit, but if neither of them executes, that means at least one of the trees is empty and one of the trees is non-empty. In that case, of course, we want to return false. They can't possibly be the same tree if one of them is empty and the other is non-empty. So basically, we just solved one leak code easy problem. This is its own problem, but now we can use this uh, function and use it in our real is subtree function. But remember, this is also going to be a recursive function. So let's start with the base cases. Remember, one of the things we determined is the the t tree, the one that's the actual uh, subtree, if it's empty, then of course it will be a subtree of the other tree, regardless of whether the other tree is empty or not. So what we can say is if not t, if t is null, then we can return true no matter what. Right? So that's really simple. Now, what if the opposite was true? Do you remember what we said? If S is empty, but T is non-empty. In that case, we have to return false. T cannot be a subtree of S. So in that case, we return false. And just so you know, the order of these conditions is very important because if we did not return with the first if statement, then we pretty much know that t is non-empty. So then here in this condition, I could here write end t to indicate that t is non-empty, but it's not necessary. I hope you can see why, because we pretty much checked that with the first condition. If t was empty, we would have returned. So here we know for sure it's not empty. We don't have to include this second condition. So now at this point, we basically know both of the trees are not empty. So what are we going to do? Well, we, of course, want to compare both of the trees, right? So let's call same tree on both of them. If they are equal, if both of the trees are the same, then we can return true. So let's check that. So is the return value true? If it is, then we can go ahead and return true. So pretty straightforward. But what if they are not the same subtree? And this is kind of the tricky part, but it's simple once you actually see it. Okay, they're not the same tree. But remember, the is subtree function is recursive. So we can instead compare t to the subtree of, of s, right? We can compare t to the left subtree of s, and we can also do the same. Uh, we can compare t with the right subtree of s. And I don't mean calling the same tree function. I mean uh, calling the is subtree function. So is subtree is t a subtree of the left subtree of s, or we could check the opposite case is t a subtree of the right subtree of s, right? So if either of these returns true, then we can return true, right? Because we only want to know if t is a subtree of at least one of the trees in s. So we can, instead of taking the logic and of both of these, we can take the logic or of both of these. So logic or, uh, you know, take that condition and then return whatever it evaluates to. So that is the entire code. Let's just run it to make sure that it works. So as you can see, yes, it does work and it is relatively efficient even though the time complexity is the size of both trees multiplied together. So I really hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel if you would like, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.